WebAssembly, write applications for the web in languages other than JavaScript. Imagine a world where you could build software with C++, Rust, Python, Go, or even COBOL, then deliver that software to the end user in a web browser without any installation and near native performance. That world became a reality in December 2019 when WebAssembly became an official W3C standard. It includes a low-level language similar to assembly that can be represented with text, then converted to a binary format that runs on all modern browsers. However, you won't actually write this code directly, but rather use it as a compilation target for programs written in other languages. For example, you might build a game with Unity and C Sharp, then compile it to WebAssembly where it can be delivered in the browser. Now it's important to note that it's not intended to replace JavaScript. In fact, the two work well together side by side. Figma, for example, uses ReactJS for its outer UI. Then on the inside, you have a high-performance C++ design tool that feels just as fast as native software. As a developer, there are many different ways you can build a WebAssembly app with many more under development. One of the most popular tools is MScripten, which can convert a C or C++ program to WebAssembly, as it did by bringing AutoCAD to the web, which is a 30-year-old codebase. No way! One of the best ways to get started is with AssemblyScript, which is a language that looks like TypeScript but compiles to WebAssembly. We can easily start a new AssemblyScript project using Node.js and NPM. Then we'll write our first WebAssembly module in the index.ts file. Unlike JavaScript, a dynamic, interpreted language, WebAssembly is a static, compiled language with strict type guarantees. For example, our code can't use the any type. When it comes to numbers, we need to specify a 32-bit integer or a 64-bit floating point. In addition, we can't use dynamic objects Instead, we use maps where we can strongly type the key value pairs. Once we're happy with our code, we can then compile it down to a binary, which is a file that ends in .wasm. We can now run this binary in the browser, open an HTML page, and then use the WebAssembly API to instantiate streaming. Simply fetch the binary, and when the promise resolves, do something with it. This has been WebAssembly in 100 seconds. If you want to see a more in-depth video on this topic, please let me know in the comments and make sure to subscribe and hit the like button. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one.